Hello everyone, I'm Thomas. I'm Thomas Lebiz. Uh, I'm really glad to be here. It's my first time in Hungary and uh, activity. Um, so today we'll talk about a little study I've performed about InfoSec tools. But first, here's my GitHub. Maybe if you yeah, already um, seen one of my tools, just say hello, but we'll see after. So here's the agenda. I won't be too long and I will show you a lot of stuff. So. Um, to be frank, in the last decade, I, I think you managed to see it also, there, there have been a lot of new tools uh, crafted. And um, why? The first question is why? Because I think, from my point of view, some whole sweet dreams now come true, just as you can now scan the entire IPv4 space. We've seen just before with an ADB on iPod. Uh, you can scan all, the, all around the world and find a, a lot of multiple stuff. Uh, you can query all open source information you want through a, a platform like scans.io, Shodan, um, and a lot of open source massive databases. You can now, in the corporate Windows world, you can pound and, uh, and hound a, a, a lot of um, uh, corporate infrastructure, even la large one, with tools like uh, Blowdown and Mimikatz. And you can, f thing is the trend, is the current trend, so you can fuzz everything you want right now. Uh, you, can, you can store a lot of passwords and hashes, try to crack them every time. The second reason, I think, is uh, uh, why we see a lot of tools right now, because coding became kind of social. This is like, a, it was, I, I think it's still the GitHub slogan, uh, social coding, but um, to, be, to be frank, I've seen a lot of uh, InfoSec people getting their coding skill really enhanced. Uh, they want to write some good and practical tool with um, preferably with no vulnerabilities. Um, and some exhibitions are already devoted to the tool crafting arts, such as the Black Art Arsenal, only devoted to tools. Um, and to be frank, so as a conclusion, uh, more and more people are writing more and more good quality stuff. And the third one, I think um, there's more tool allowing attack and defense. Why? Um, I think we are gaining a lot of pop more, more and more popularity for the blue side. Uh, we've moved, we are moving from the breaking era to the securing and building era through uh, bug bounties, which um, uh, honors, some, uh, honors the blue side uh, with a massive uh, um, source of information coming from the crowd. Um, and then, at the third point, I think we are finally taking advantage of the visualization, such as uh, Blue Down representing stuff in graph, and it helps you know, defenders and attackers. Uh, but in the same time, so a, a lot of tools have been developed and good quality stuff, but we still rely on, on some old school uh, tools, such as uh, this one. I think you can see it. It dates from 1997, which is Nmap. And it's still the most predominant, uh, predominant tool to perform some port scanning. THC, which produced a lot of tools, which like Hydra, you know, you think the date, it's not coming from last year. And the group was formed in the middle of the 90s. And their tools is still quite used, I think, even, even from, from beginners to professional. Um, in 2003, Fyodor, the guy behind Nmap, performed like a, a benchmark or a survey. And in, so, <laughs> almost 20 years ago, you can see what, which, was, uh, which were the good tools and the renowned tool, and you can recognize that the, the, most, of, most of the tools listed here are still active and maintained. Nikto, um, uh, NBT scan, I, don't, I, won't be, I won't say maintained, but still existing and working. Uh, Kane and Abel, uh, OpenSSL, Brutus, the whole school stuff, uh, THC Hydra, uh, actively maintained. So, um, in the same time, we, we developed a, a lot of new tools, but we are still using some good old tools. And to be frank, um, I was asking, I was wondering when I uh, facing this, uh, this conclusion, I was asking, how are these new tools really built and are they really better than the previous one? Where are they hosted? Uh, if they're a trend, uh, can, we, can we say that uh, every tool is hosted some, in some places, specific places? How long are they maintained? You have seen some Nmap and some uh, whole tools. They are, most of them are still maintained. And are they really better designed than the whole one? Remember that the first version of Netcat uh, was vulnerable to uh, stack buffer overflow, so which is a shame for a security, uh, security practitioner using uh, security vulnerable stuff. Um, and 
all in all, how did how did it evolve? Uh, what are the trends and how our community um, have been doing with this kind of tool? So, what I've been doing is analyze the metadata from four um, sources of publication, four uh, renowned and major uh, sources. The first one, I think you know it, it's PacketStorm, which is an old school, old school platform. The second one, Tools Watch. Third one, Kitploit. And the last one, Nowhere. This is the source of my study. Um, from the two, the, the first, the two first uh, uh, sources, I've been crawling manually uh, the results and the archive. And you'll see just after, for the two last one, I've been taking the vilnius.com feed, which provides structured data for free, uh, which is really helpful. And how did I did it? Um, uh, with Data, data Eco, I don't know if you know, it's a French-based startup doing uh, an amazing tool. Mostly I use it as an Excel, uh, Excel uh, better, better than Excel tool, mostly Excel on steroids. You can try it for free, there's a free, uh, free edition. I will, I will dem not demonstrate the tool, but I've been doing all the, the study with this tool because of the convenience. And how many records have been analyzed? So for PacketStorm, you see almost 7,000. Tools Watch, uh, 1,000 and a half. Um, Kitploit, 3,000. And Nowhere, 1,000. So, uh, just I was, as I was saying, if you don't know Vilnius.com, just, just check their website. I don't know if some Vilnius.com uh, staff is here, but I want to say hello to, to these people because they are providing for free really good quality and they are structuring data of unstruct, unstructured uh, feeds blog, uh, IOC, exploit, whatever. So just check out their, their website. And I was uh, using for my study, I was downloading the collection, uh, the, whole, um, the whole data set from, uh, from what, was the, what, what are they calling Archive. So first, uh, the source of the data set. So I'm switching. OK, wait for it. So no. What I've been doing is, um, I've, after collecting and grabbing all the data, I was seeing that uh, PacketStorm, the first post and the first tool post in PacketStorm started from 1994, um, which is not relevant because uh, all the other sources are not, were not existing at that time. So I was filtering so from the last decade. And you can see that the, most, of the, um, most of the sources uh, have the same order of magnitude, you know, it counts in thousands, few thousands uh, of uh, data. So the first thing, uh, the first graph I, I wanted to draw uh, is this one. So you can see, don't, don't take a look at the end of the graph, you know, it, it, it's, it feels like it goes down, but it's just because it's the fourth uh, quarter uh, of uh, this year and it's just started. So <laughs> it's normal that the numbers are really lower than the previous. So you just have to to, to stop here, and you can see that on the whole, if you draw a, a, a line, it goes on, and it goes up um, from 2010. So the first conclusion is more and more tools are being published. Um, and if you see it by sources, um, it will print. So you, you can find here the four major sources, Kitploit, PacketStorm, ToolsWatch, and Nowhere. So the first thing we see is Kitploit is really uh, buying everything and publishing a lot, a, lot of, uh, a lot of tools and is trying to be the new references for, for, for tool publication. And here you can see that uh, PacketStorm is quite maintaining its rhythm, which is quite good. Uh, on the contrary, than ToolsWatch.org, which is, I don't, know, I don't know why, I don't know the reason, but publications are decreasing a lot until zero. And nowhere, um, the same. There was, there was a, a, a peak a few years ago, um, but now, I don't know, it starts to decrease a bit. I don't know the context, I don't know the reason. Um, but still, so you can see Kitploit is trying to be the new source. The other question I was asking, uh, Sorry, no. The other question I was asking was, uh, where are the tools really hosted? In the end, even if you get published on one, uh, one of the four major sources, uh, in the end, the tool uh, is supposedly uh, uh, hosted on GitHub. You can see the, um, 
hegemony, as we say in France, <laughs> the, the magnificence of GitHub compared to all other sources. I was pretty, to be frank, I was pretty um, uh, surprised that to see that Bitbucket is really low, way down, you know, the good old sourceforge code.google.com, which is now shut down, but Bitbucket is, you, you can have the impression that Bitbucket is really developed for security people, but we don't like, apparently, to host our tool on Bitbucket, which is not a good, quite a good idea. I think we, we should <laughs> build some resiliency because uh, tomorrow, if GitHub closes or ha has a new policy, uh, all our stuff is going to be locked there. Then, um, another interesting graph is, uh, so we, we, we can see from the previous graph that GitHub, SourceForge, Google.com, and Bitbucket, kind of, where, um, at least uh, in our mind, the four sources for tool hosting, and you can see really that before Q2, uh, the, yeah, this is this one, before Q2 or Q3 of 2013, you know, there was not like uh, an hegemony somewhere because all the competitors were trying to fight and try to share the market, but at, at some turning, turning point in 2013, really GitHub won everything. You can see the, the graph. Now everything is on GitHub in our community. That's the conclusion of this graph, apparently. Um, yeah, so if everything, uh, if I go back to my slide, um, if everything uh, is on GitHub, let's focus on GitHub. So what I did uh, is taking the, uh, analyzing two, uh, uh, 23, uh, hundreds of GitHub repositories for InfoSec tools, and just having try, trying to, to get some statistics for each one, and computing the average, the median, and the standard deviation as just a, a scientific uh, study. So stars here, you can see that on the average, um, an InfoSec tool got 1,000 1, stars, and the median is uh, 200. So it, remember, the median divides the world into the upper part and the lower part. So it's the lower part. So if you develop some tools and you get a, a number of stars uh, above uh, this number, almost uh, um, sorry, almost 300, so you're in the top part. <laughs> and if you are below, well, you can gain some popularity. It will it will help. Then for a fox, um, you can see the number. So there's more stars on fox. People are more inclined to, to like a tool than maybe trying to contribute. This is maybe the first impression. The watchers is kind of the same number of the stars. Why? Because one star induces one watch on GitHub. Release is an interesting number. We don't, we don't release a much. We don't release much version in, uh, at least uh, in the GitHub format, you know, or creating a real uh, and a true release. Uh, we are publishing really few on the average, you see few releases. If you don't publish anything, yeah, you're on the, average, yeah, you're, you're on the median line. Uh, if you, I think you cannot go down. Um, maybe if you publish one release which is broken, maybe you're even worse than the median, maybe. But at least, yeah, we don't publish much. The size, uh, on the average, our tools um, weigh um, 15 megs. Uh, on the median is one meg. The commits, number of commits, you can see, a, it doesn't say anything. I don't have any explanation for this. But uh, the next one, the next indicator, is really uh, interesting and what what's, uh, was one of the, the key points I wanted to investigate on. I was really asking in our community, we are publishing a lot of stuff. How long do we maintain our tools, really? Because having a good tools working on day one is cool. Is is cool, but the same tool working uh, ten years after or five five years after is really better. So you can see that on the average. We maintain our tools during two years and a half, which is, to, uh, 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 to my opinion, pretty, pretty good because we publish a lot of scripts, you know, quick and dirty stuff, and these numbers show that at least on the average we are um, maintaining, train, wanting to maintain uh, uh, longer this kind of quick and dirty stuff because maybe some people are, are, are trying to uh, uh, be... Uh, um, trying to take this script and try to make them better and main, uh, officially maintain them. Um, all the issues now, um, you can see this kind of numbers. So 
a lot of issues. What's really interesting that uh, is the ratio of all issues uh, um, related to the open one. So I think you can see uh, on average we have this number and on open we, we have this one. So we are, I think, pretty good on fixing stuff or at least trying to uh, closing tickets and issues. Maybe not for a good reason, but at least we, we are trying to, to get involved uh, into the maintenance. maintenance. Um, on the pull request is also, I think, a good number. With this kind of number are, are continually uh, evolving and uh, increasing. So um, you have like 70, on the average 70 uh, pull requests, contribution to a tool. And we also validate uh, a lot of pull requests because you can see that the number of open pull requests is pretty low compared uh, to the pull request number. So let's go back to the graph. So as I was saying, so from the first part of, stu of the study, I've seen that everything is kind of hosted on GitHub. So let's focus on GitHub. Um, and right now, I wanted to know um, what are the, the most stared uh, InfoSec tools. So you you cannot see everything here, but from the study, from the whole the, the 23,000 repositories analyzed, you can see the most popular one. So here, uh, I don't really know the fact what this, what this tool is really doing. I, I don't know it, I don't use it, but I think it's for good. See the number, is really the true one, the true first. After, we have a set list from Daniel Messler that shows something interesting to me, that we can have the best tool in the world. In the end, we, want, we preferably want a good list, a good world list. So this, uh, this repository hosts some good world lists for everything, passwords, URL, uh, username, whatever. And that tells something about the community. Building tools is quite cheap. Maintaining and having a good world list is the key. It's the key to perform a good uh, penetration test or, or to protect yourself. JDX, which is a reverse engineering stuff. Um, you can see here Metasploit. So Metasploit is in the top one, two, three, four, five. Top five most stared, so most appreciated tool on GitHub, apparently. Ghidra, <laughs> uh, which, which did a, a good breakthrough in this ranking because it's a, a publicly, uh, publicly uh, new tool. Uh, and from the beginning, it just got accepted by our community, and the numbers are pretty high, pretty fast. Um, can, rem can see here SQL map. Um, DNSPy, the uh, speaker this morning told about this DNSPy, so you can see uh, it is in the top 20 um, most preferred and uh, favorite tools in our community. The thing is, from this graph, if I draw a conclusion, I see mostly offensive stuff, um, apart from the, f uh, yeah, apart from the from, from few ones which can be used uh, from attack and defense, but m most of the tool you can see Metasploit, DNSPy for reverse engineering, Seclis for brute forcing stuff, Ghidra, um, uh, MATM proxy, this is more offensive stuff. It was, I think, I don't know, you, you cannot, uh, you, you, have, <laughs> you have the right not to agree with me, but I think mostly offensive stuff. Then, if we move uh, onto the most forked um, uh, repository, you can see here, the first one is Metasploit. So it validates the popularity and the attractiveness of Metasploit for people trying to contribute. Um, then you can see you can see a lot of tools we've seen just before: JDX, Ghidra, MATM Proxy, um, Empire in the top 20 uh, to repositories, Mimikatz, which again um, see I, I, I still see in the most fork, most mostly offensive tools. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why I cannot explain. I think people want to when they see a good tool, they want to fork it, making some slight modification for their own usage, and use it for mostly offensive purposes, and maybe at the end trying to contribute back and to port back their modification to the, to the official tool. Then, for the biggest number of, uh, you cannot see, but this is the biggest number of open issues. Um, here, I see mostly um, maybe defensive stuff. You can see MISP, which arrived in the second position. You, I think you... Uh, who, kn who in this room knows, raise your hand, about MISP? Oh, a few, few hands, I would expect more. MISP is a project from the Luxembourg CERT, and it helps um, CERT and blue, blue teamers um, 
by be being a, a, a centralization of IOCs and, and uh, defensive stuff for everyday purposes, IPs, uh, uh, ashes from malware and so. You can see uh, Radar Redos also with the biggest number of open issues, so people want to contribute really uh, uh, and to, to trying to fix or to just to open some, um, to, uh, how would I say, how would I say, uh, just to, yeah, to, 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 to show some bugs in this tool and want, but in the end maybe wanting to, uh, to, incre to improve it. Um, and you can see Cuckoo Sandbox, still Metasploit, um, and map, which is really uh, attack and defense stuff. Then uh, let's move on with the um, next graph, um, which is the, the infosec tool with the biggest number of, um, of uh, open pull requests. So after opening your issue, maybe at the same time you want to open uh, to contribute by submitting a pull request. So here, the, I think uh, we we see mostly. Uh, mostly defensive stuff with Nmap. I think people want to increase their Nmap uh, just to be allowed and uh, to, to be, uh, uh, yeah, not, not to be allowed, but to, to be able, sorry, to be able to detect more stuff. You can see Anger, which is uh, not really uh, defensive stuff, maybe mostly for re reverse engineering, but uh, yeah. This is the, I think this is an interesting uh, graph to see that uh, the, the, the project with the most contribution, open contribution. Uh, and then, one interesting graph also is the top 20 of the uh, InfoSec tool with the longest maintenance period. So, here you can see uh, 7,000 days. It's in, it's in days, the, uh, the, the graph. GitHub, so 7,000 7, days. Uh, it's more like it's, it's close to 20 years ago. 20 years ago, GitHub wasn't invented. So I. To be frank, I was expecting to see this graph. Yo, uh, the, the numbers are really uh, cheap. You know, the, my my whole my whole study is fucked up. Um, nothing is really good here. And I've been to several repositories, and no, I discovered that on GitHub you can have back <laughs> back dates. So Simplicator, which is the first one with the being the most the most maintained. Uh, yeah, you can you can see here the first. Um, I don't know if it's big enough for you, but uh, it dates from uh, 1999. So the first commit on this Simplicator tool, after being published on GitHub, uh, dates really like 20 years ago. You can see in, also in the change log, it really starts from, uh, from, from this period. So good news, my study is not fuck that fucked up. <laughs> um, so this graph here, yeah, you can see, you can you can find after Simplicator uh, TCP replay, which is also a good uh, good old tool. Ethercap, Impacket, which is which start to be a whole project m uh, actively maintained, but still a, a good a good uh, framework for Windows Windows communication. Nmap, you can see your good old Nmap here. Um, Aircrack also. Trinity, I don't think it's the um, I don't know if it is the Android malware we've just seen before. Um, so yeah, it was interesting to see, uh, because to be frank, apart from Nmap, Ethercap, and, and Impacket, I wouldn't know a lot of tools here. So Apple Pie, NetSpark, PSAD, I don't know this tool, maybe you do, but I don't know. And to be frank, they have been actively maintained uh, in our community. Then, um, what I wanted to see, oh yeah, interesting, the, the languages. So. Uh, We've seen so far that everything is hosted on GitHub. There's more and more tools. Um, we have, I think, maybe good numbers of maintenance and uh, contribution in our community. So the next thing I wanted to see is the language, the, the most preferred one language we use. And um, so from the GitHub repositories and scanning the languages, there's an API to determine for a project the, the proportion of Python or, or whatever language uh, code uh, you have in this uh, project. So, tada, the first language, the, our most preferred language is Python. I don't know if it's uh, surprising to you. I don't, it's not a surprise to me because first I like Python and I see a lot of tools written in Python because in Python you, have, you can do everything. There's a lot of library. You can really perform everything and reuse instead of develop. Then you can see shell, HTML. So. Uh, and 
in the top five, we have C and JavaScript. And what's interesting, because I've been doing this study, I've been predating this, this, this study uh, twice this year, and I've seen uh, a nice trend in the, in the figure. So uh, in the early, uh, early year uh, version of this uh, study, C Sharp was behind Objective-C. So you can see that C Sharp is, is gaining popularity. Then Go was behind Perl. So we can see that Go is trying to, again, advance uh, in, in our community. And the last one, which is interesting, GitHub classifies it as a language Dockerfile. So, and Dockerfile was behind CSS. So by, with this movement, we can see that Docker, uh, C Sharp, uh, and Go is uh, uh, gaining popularity and is being more and more used, but still Python and Shell is, uh, are the most predominant uh, languages that we use. Um, so, whatever, so if a lot of tools are mostly developed in Python, let's focus in Python. And then, on the next part of the study, I've been taking all the Python tools published on GitHub and trying to see some trends or trying to, trying to see the characteristics of this, uh, of this movement. So, um, here, I don't know, this is a dumb, uh, uh, I don't know uh, why I've been doing this, but I wanted to, to see um, the top 20 of the infosec tools in Python having the biggest number, the biggest number of dependencies. So maybe the most complex stuff we have so far, so you can recognize some LinkedIn car, which is, uh, if I don't mistake, uh, an Android, uh, uh, Android um, framework or general purpose stuff to, to act on an Android application. Um, so, Plazo, you can recognize Plazo here. Silent Trinity, which is quite a tiny project so far, but still with a, a lot of dependencies, you can see, almost uh, 50. Uh, so then it was the first graph I wanted to, to, to show. And then, most in, uh, interesting graph, the top 20 of the most used Python third-party modules uh, that we use. And here, you recognize that the, the most popular uh, library we use in our Python program Request, so to perform HTTP request, Beautiful Soup, uh, and LXML to, to, to parse HTML, XML, and so on. Uh, six, just to, <laughs> this is details a lot also. Six is the uh, utility to, um, to convert your Python 2 script into Python 3. Um, so we are, we are seeing that uh, a lot of people are, are trying to port their script from 2 to 3. Then we have Colorama, because hackers want the fancy shell with uh, some colorful stuff. Um, DNS Python, Flask, uh, Shardet. Shardet is a good news to see Shardet in the top maybe tw uh, uh, 10 or 20, uh, 15 uh, most popular, sorry, most popular library because Shardet is made for uh, Shardset detection and trying, uh, to, trying to, and giving your script the ability to, to be used worldwide uh, in every language. So you use, please use Shardet for your program. Then you have TermColor, which is like the nemesis of Colorama. So Colorama is way more popular than TermColor for, your, for coloring your shell. And what's really interesting in, the, in, the, in this list is you can see that uh, so far it's really general purpose library to perform some HTTP requests. It's not, it's not I think, um, um, specific to our community, InfoSec community, but the first specific library to use uh, that people use in their project is Scapy. This is the first security-oriented library that we apparently use because it's the first one uh, um, in the top 20 not being gener general for general purpose. Then, um, digging, di <laughs> uh, digging uh, uh, deep into the, uh, into the study, I wanted to, sh to see that uh, which crypto module in Python that we lack to use. And I wasn't surprised by the result, but really, I think you, uh, if you're developing your Python script and wanted to perform some crypto stuff, you really need to, to be careful because a lot of people are using PyCrypto, apparently. PyCrypto is not maintained um, anymore since two, uh, two, um, 2013, and there's some, some vulnerabilities that affect this, the, this, this uh, library. So please stop using PyCrypto. Prefer, if you want to port your script, you have 
rather to use PyCryptodome, which, is, which are uh, maintained and the fix vulnerabilities uh, that PyCrypto uh, had. And the general purpose library for crypto operation in Python is cryptography. So from the early version, the first version of this year's study, PyCrypto was, uh, had a, a biggest, uh, a big, sorry, uh, had a big um, share, and the share is trying to be reduced, which is a good news, but still uh, it represents like 30% of um, crypto usage in our Python tool. So, so please uh, stop, stop use that, uh, that variety. That's, sorry, that's library. Um, and the last part of the study, um, so I'm showing you, I'm giving you all the, the references here. The last part of the study um, is to focus again in Python libraries because I wanted to see if what was the, the hygiene of our Python tool. Are they vulnerable to a lot of stuff? Are we using uh, dependencies that has some CVE? Do we maintain, do we increase, and do we uh, yeah, maintain actively uh, our requirements.txt? Um, and to be frank, I had some, some surprise here because I, I, I've seen a lot of um, uh, projects. So for this part of the study, I've, I've used the um, pyup.io uh, vulnerability databases. It's focused for Python libraries, and I crossed, uh, and I joined this dataset with my dataset to see um, how many projects had their dependencies vulnerable to some CVE. And the, uh, the, the first library, the most preferred library that we use and which is vulnerable and not maintained is Django for uh, building a web server. Then we have Request, which is, uh, have you seen, uh, as, you've seen, as you have seen, the, the favorite uh, library to perform some HTTP requests. Uh, and then we have uh, we have a lot of uh, different libraries that we don't maintain anymore uh, and we don't upgrade the no their number in requirement.txt. Um, <clears throat> and here you can see in this figure that um, this is the, uh, the, the representation of the vulnerabilities per Python dependency. So here you, you, can find, you can see that request, this CV is related to request and is really present in a lot of, uh, in a lot of repositories. So uh, again, uh, please fix and maintain your requirement.txt and stop. Um, this kind of declaration, you know, is, is not good because it fixes, uh, it, um, yeah, it, um, it, uh, it, this is a strict requirement and it cannot, if you use this tool, it doesn't allow you to upgrade uh, the Django version and because it, it gives you a, a, a static reference to a version. So please use at least uh, superior than this version. I know you can have some compatibility issues, but still don't use equal equal because it, uh, it, uh, uh, it fixes some, some stuff in requirement.60. So, uh, you, you may ask, uh, yeah, cool, this, <laughs> this study uh, is maybe useful, maybe not, I don't know. But uh, anyway, everything, including this presentation, is already available on my GitHub. So I've made it to be, uh, to be repeatable, so today you can take the project and uh, replay it by your own. Hopefully it won't break. Uh, this is the power of that IQ. Just You just have to, to play, uh, uh, to, to press uh, build, and it will build the whole, um, the whole study updating the figures, updating the data sets, updating the charts. So um, here you can find so the project slides, the project that uh, the data could project, and some significant data sets uh, that you've seen today to be exported. And if, you can, if, if there's any usage of this as a data set for your, study, for your own study, I would be more than happy. But yeah, I released everything, so everything is available with a tutorial. So uh, how to install the Taiku and to import the project and so. So I'm open to, uh, to your contribution and, to, and for your, your remark um, about this project. Um, and then for the last part of my presentation, which, is, which should, should be, to be frank, uh, uh, should have his own, um, his own presentation, is the golden rules from my point of view 
for modern tools. If you want your tools to be modern, um, easy to use, easy to install, easy to contribute to, so please follow this kind of rule. I think you all experienced, like me, like you wanted to use a tool and in your environment it doesn't work, it doesn't compile. It, you cannot install it, you cannot contribute, uh, it breaks stuff, it doesn't support proxy, whatever. So I try to, to list all the, <laughs> the problems everyone as a community we've been facing before, I think. So first, please, uh, Parse, <laughs> parse some arguments with some uh, standard library. In Python, it's, it's called ArcParse. The previous one, was, which was called OptParse. So please use ArcParse and make your script uh, accepting arguments with the standard library. You'll see it's really easy to do. Then, as an input, a lot of scripts are, are accepting only a single entry. Just please, uh, if you want your tool to scale, uh, accept uh, an input file with several entry, one entry per line, and it would be better. Uh, build it with modularity to, to his public contributions. Uh, from my point of view, uh, I think, I don't know if you know the tool ReconNG for reconnaissance, recon-ng. Um, I, th I think it's pretty well developed, and it's based really on modularity, and each plugin for each, each, thing, uh, each uh, site to be grabbed and to be uh, collected is built really with a good framework. And to me, it's a good example of how you want to develop your own tool if you want to ease public contribution. Please also uh, provide some easy to pass output in CSV, JSON. Please, no XML. Oh, we are, uh, this is not modern at all from, from my point of view. CSV or JSON, CSV for human, JSON is for programs. Um, but really, please uh, allow standard output. Make it, please. <laughs> Not everyone. Uh, to, to, uh, I think you, you, you will better understand my point of view here than maybe in the US. Uh, we have accent in our char sets. Please use UTF-8. This is coming from a French guy, so um, really make it, world, make it usable worldwide and not only in the US. Use for performance in synchronous execution. There are simple rules for this. If, it's, if your program is IO bounded, you have to use multi-thread. If it is CPU bounded, you have to use multiprocessing. In Python, this is in Python 3 and even 2 right now because it has been backported. There is a standard and cool library which is called Concurrent, Concurrent.Futures, and it allows easily. You'll see in my project, I've used it, uh, I've used it uh, a lot to perform some multiple um, process. Um, I've been using a lot of Concurrent.Futures, and it has two subclasses for multi thread and multi processing. It's really easy to use, trust me. Uh, provide multiple verbosity level, like from info to warning to debug, uh, for 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 users to be able to to understand what's going on uh, for failures. Please, in our corporate corporate world, lots of things is based on Windows. Please, in your tool, if it does some internal scanning, internal stuff, please support NTLM authentication at least. Please, if if you are even better, please support Kerberos authentication. Please also support HTTP proxy traversal uh, to be able to, uh, to go outside uh, of your corporate environment. Uh, if, if it's even better if you support SOX proxification. Uh, it's really useful for everyone. As we've seen it just before, just don't use and maintain, please, your dependencies, uh, being for, uh, granting people the possibility to upgrade their code and to, uh, and to maintain it uh, in the long run. Uh, sorry. Package your tool, please. Package your tool and make it easily installable. Uh, there's a lot of tutorials to build a, pip, a Python pip package. It's pretty easy. Uh, publish your tool and your, pa your package on pipe.org and it will be uh, easier for everyone. Uh, in the same way, please provide pre-built binaries if you, uh, if, you, uh, if you compile or if you develop some, some uh, compilable code. Uh, or containers, there's a big, as, we, as we've seen just before, Docker is having a, a better and better represent, representation in our community. A lot of people are publishing their Docker file uh, uh, ready to be uh, installed, and it's, it helps attackers and defenders. So I've seen some people saying that providing pre-built stuff helps attackers only, and no, this is not true. You have to help defenders also, because defenders have to attack their own platform to be able to understand what, what will be going on. So they don't have time to spend to build your 
your your your program and your all your tool chain. So please provide pre-built stuff, please. And in the end, encrypt traffic. <laughs> so to be you you build some secure uh, some security tools. You have uh, they have to be secure. This tool has to be secure and it has to encrypt traffic because uh, extracting hashes, uh, phishing people, phishing password uh, logins uh, is cool, but um, making um, third party attackers not being able to see what's going on is better, so please encrypt your traffic. So, as a conclusion, and I will be ready for any question after, as a quick conclusion to, my, to me, uh, if you can make easily a good tool, some good tool uh, will work. If your, uh, if your tool scale, it's better. Uh, and in the end, great tool lasts. Thank you.